O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. I 
Reading from the Wisdom of Surah. While I was still young, before I went on my travels, I sought wisdom openly in my prayer. Before the temple, I asked for her, and I will search for her until the end. From the first blossom to the ripening grape, my heart delighted in her. My foot walked on the straight path, and from my youth I followed her steps. I inclined my ear a little and received her, and I found for myself much instruction. I made progress in her. To him who gives wisdom, I will give glory. For I resolved to live according to wisdom, and I was zealous for the good, and I shall never be disappointed. My soul grappled with wisdom, and in my conduct I was strict. I spread out my hands to the heavens and lamented my ignorance of her. I directed my soul to her, and in purity I found her. With her I gained understanding from the first. Therefore, I will never be forsaken. My heart was stirred to seek her. Therefore, I have gained a prized possession. The Lord gave me my tongue as a reward, and I will praise him with it. Here ends the reading. Ooh. 
A reading from the Gospel of St. Matthew. Jesus said, All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal, to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Here ends the reading. If you haven't recently been to Old World, Wisconsin, or if you have never been there, I would highly commend it to you. I don't know if they're open yet, but it might be a good place for a walk in the country if they are. If you've never been there, it's a museum showing what Wisconsin was like in pioneer times. And they have imported buildings from many different ethnic groups, Swedish, Danish, German, different groups who farmed Wisconsin in, in the earliest days of our statehood. And if you go out there, sometimes they have exhibits and sometimes they have demonstrations. We've seen, when we were out there, baseball as it was played in the 19th century. And one time we saw the demonstration of a man trying to plow with a draft horse. Now, I had a feeling that this man did not have a lot of experience plowing with the draft horse because the demonstration did not go well. The horse got out in front and was doing his job, but the man behind the plow couldn't keep it in the ground, he couldn't keep it going in a straight line, he was sweating, he was saying bad words, and by the time he got up and back, the furrows were just all over the place. I think of that demonstration Every time this reading comes up in Matthew's Gospel, take my yoke upon me, you, for my burden is light. We live in a society where we want to be in control all the time. I think that's part of our, of our culture. It's part of our human nature. As you look back on this example of the man driving, pulling, or the man trying to plow with a, with a single plow and a draft horse, the horse had the easy job. The horse just had to go straight forward. And while this man was having trouble going back and forth and keeping the plow on the ground, occasionally the horse would turn around and you could see in the horse's face, this horse is saying, buddy, get your act together. It's not that hard. When we take the yoke of Jesus on us, our image is that we're taking the great burden on ourselves very often. But the reality is, the hard job lands on the person driving the plow. The hard job has landed on Jesus, who came into the world for our salvation. We also, we grasp from time to time at this notion of being in control, and especially during this time of pandemic, 
We look for little small pieces of our lives that we can grasp onto and feel that we have some semblance of control that is going on within our lives. I think we have to refer back to this story about the plowman and the horse. And remember that when we take the yoke of Jesus upon us, Jesus is the one doing the hard work. Jesus is the one driving the plow. Jesus is the one who came into the world for our salvation and died for us and rose again and opened the gates of salvation for all of us. Now that's not to say that we don't have burdens as we take the yoke upon us and we go through our lives. We do have hardships, we have calamities, we have things that seem to be burdens to us. And that's when we need to remember to turn around, look back, and remember who's driving the plow. Now this isn't to say that we simply say, well, you know, okay, that's fine, it's in God's hands, and whatever happens is up to God, so I can step back and not take a degree of responsibility for what's going on. Very often, I've heard during this pandemic people asking, where is God in the world? And how is God responding to this thing that I don't understand, that I am not in control of? I often say that aside from sending Jesus into the world for our salvation, the greatest gift that God gave to humanity is our intellect and our free will. And through God's grace, surrounded by God's grace, we participate in God's place in the world. We remember that God is in the world and working all the time. God is all over the place in this pandemic. Not necessarily performing one-on-one miracles that um, I think some of us would hope would happen. But God is in the world working working through the hands of nurses and doctors and lab technicians, working through men and women who work in nursing homes, caring for people's loved ones until such time as their families can visit them again. God is working in the world through the hands of good cops who strive to keep us safe. And God is working through the voices of those who take to the street to remind us that black lives do matter and remind us how much further we have to go to bring the kingdom of God into its fruition. God is at work in our time, in our place, through miracles, through the answering of prayers, and through us. So this week, as we participate in the world as best we can, let us remember that God's grace surrounds us constantly that God is with us as we walk through this, and that as we put the yoke of Christianity on us, remember that God is behind us, driving the plow, having done, and still doing the really hard work. Believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass.
trespasses down against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only you can be safe. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your ways be known upon earth. Your saving love among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things for which our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night. And give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joys. And all for your love's sake. Amen. We continue to pray this week for the church. We pray for Stephen, our bishop, and for the staff at Nicholson House. We pray for all the parishes and entities of this diocese as they minister in this time of pandemic. We continue to pray for our companion of Nawala, which is now is also experiencing the wrath of the COVID-19 virus. We continue to pray for the people of our covenant partner, the Cathedral of St. John the Evangelist, and their rector, Bishop Jeff Haynes. We continue to pray for all those in civil authority, especially our president, our governor, our Congress, and our state legislature. We continue to pray for all in our parish prayer list, for Bob, Boris, Polly, Judy, Peggy, Sam, John, Pat, Chip, Marie, Linda, and for all those who have been affected by the pandemic. We pray for the families of those who are hospitalized and in facilities that still don't allow visitors. And we remember is not only the inside of such places where people feel profound senses of isolation. We continue to pray for our first responders, especially Jake and Nicole, for medical professionals, especially Karen, and for those working to advance the scientific knowledge to battle this disease. And in the midst of this pandemic, we give thanks for those celebrating life's milestones this week, those celebrating birthdays, including Rosario Hardeman, Mary Hinderleiter, and John Helberson. And we rejoice with those celebrating anniversaries this week, including Alec and Olivia Kopitsky, John and Kathy Helberson, Fred and Mary Kames, and Kathy and Eric Nelson. And we continue to pray for all afflicted by racism and bigotry, that Jesus, pray, that Jesus prayer that one day we all may be one as he and the Father are one comes to fruition. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. You have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you'll be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.
You gave them bread from heaven. Alleluia. Containing within itself all sweetness. Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, whom this wonderful sacrament has left us a perpetual memory of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to venerate the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may ever perceive within ourselves the fruit of your redemption, who lives and reigns world without end. Blessed be, God. Blessed be God. Blessed be His holy name. Blessed be, His holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be, Je- blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be His most sacred heart. Blessed be His most sacred heart. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament. Blessed be God, the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Blessed be God, the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in His angels and in His saints. Let us be God in the angels and in the saints. Lord. 